but it was also engaging and it drew us into the lives of the people that it was documenting. And it was also energizing. And so by documenting how people responded to the 2016 election, resistorhood has really ensured itself a place, if you will, in how the history of that time is told. And we need to tell women's history from the lens of women. And that's not something that always happens. And so resistorhood definitely did that as it followed six diverse Americans as they fight for social justice on the streets, as well as in the halls of power. And over the course of two years, we get to see how they work to protect their rights, our rights, and inspire others to join in this movement. And from a filmmaking perspective, one of the things I really appreciated was they captured the broad strokes, the context of what was happening, as well as the personal unvarnished impact on the people who were engaged. And that to me really showed the strength and the courage of these women. And, you know, it's not just a story of the past, of something that happened and the hope and the resistance in modern American politics, but it really offers a blueprint for how we can move forward, how we need to move forward, frankly, in this time and, and in whatever lies ahead. So because of all of this and far more, I'm very proud to present the 2024 Women's Voices Now Film Festival's Best Emerging Filmmaker Award for Documentary F Feature by Cheryl Jacobs Krim. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for sharing your film with us. He had the audacity to ask, why couldn't I vote for him? What did I have to lose? Everything. Recently, someone looked at me and he said, hey, you lady from ISIS, get out of our country and leave us alone. I feel so bad now that I have to take my scarf off when I'm driving my car because I'm scared about my life. We have to keep together. We have to keep talking. We have to keep fighting. We have to keep inspiring each other and reminding each other what's at stake. Mr. Speaker, I will not be here or outside at the inauguration ceremony. The event I'm going to is the Women's March on Washington. Thank God to the women for having invited and called us all together. To me, it's like a very simple message. You're not alone. I want to stand up for people who, who are in danger. And I want to use the incredible platform that I have to make someone else feel more comfortable on their own skin. When I got to see my name in the ballot, that was the most exciting moment in my whole life. And I look to you to be that other generation that will carry forth the march for freedom. She made it sure that her voice was heard. And I thought if she can do this, then I can do this. The single largest electoral force in the United States of America is women. Good morning, resistors. You gotta vote. You gotta educate yourself. You gotta get out there. You gotta fight for what you believe in. There's an incredible amount of opportunity now for all of us to rise up and to really stand for something. Rise up, let's march on Washington. Our footsteps and our voices will be heard. Wow. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. This means so much to me. I I, I um I have to, to gather my wits. Um you talk about the unintended consequences of women as we're as we are advancing. And we had the audacity in 2016 to put up a candidate who had arguably the most ex most experience ever to become president. And she was beaten uh potentially. <laughs> and what we got was Donald Trump. And um, I, I didn't know what to do when that happened. And I thought as a, as a filmmaker, I just have to go out and start talking to people. And 
feeling how they're feeling. And I, I, it turned into a feature film. It is my first feature film. And I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of this. And I'm so honored because this film we need today more than we did, uh, in the last election, our country is is in a really bad place right now. We all have to make our voices heard. This film, the wonderful subjects in this film, show us how we will be able to uh, keep our democracy. Follow the women in the film. Stand up. Make your voice heard. Go get arrested. Go march. Start an organization. At the very least, vote. Vote and get everybody that you know to vote. It's so important. And again, I'm I'm so honored and so thrilled and, and so surprised. Thank you so much. And I cannot tell you how important our voices now are. So thank you so much to Women's Voices Now. I'm 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 very honored. Thank you so much, CJ. We're really, really grateful that you were able to join us. And um, what you said is really poignant. The film is more valuable now um, than ever, truly. So thank you for making such a historical document for us um, and a reminder of what we're fighting for. Um, we're going to keep moving forward. And I'm so honored that we have our next presenter with us today. Um, Ale Velasco was a member of a our Girls Voices Now team for several years. And what you need to know about our Girls Voices Now team is this is a crew of people dedicated to helping youth filmmakers make social impact documentaries. Um, our program is five weeks over the summer and we create an incredible collection of documentaries led entirely by these astounding youth filmmakers. And Ale was in our program for three summers with us helping shape um, these incredible films. So we're so honored that she's able to be here with us today to help present the award for best creative short documentary. Ale? Thank you so much, Chelsea. Hi, everyone. I am so happy to be here. Um, I miss everyone at Women's Voices Now, and I miss Girls' Voices Now so much. It's, it was, it's the best thing you can do in the summer. So I would totally recommend to go to... Um, this year, if it's still open, it would be amazing. Um, so today, it is my honor to be with you, presenting the award for Best Creative Documentary Short and the $1,000 prize. This award goes to a film displaying originality and innovation. It challenges conventional documentary style or form in addressing women's experiences or issues um, affecting women and or girls. We know that creative, poetic, and other non-traditional documentary styles are often underrepresented across awards categories, and we aim to make space for this form of expression and storytelling. Um, it's a good thing that we made this space because this year we had a number of films nominated and in discussion by our jury panel in this category. Uh, interestingly enough, many of the films were about similar issues. Uh, this goes to show the power of creativity in allowing us to discuss familiar things in new ways. Um, the jury called the winning film an emotional portrayal of the illegal abortion experiences. The archival audio tape recordings paired with reenactments of the scenes narrated in the tapes gives this a docu-fiction feel. Uh, with great work done to seamlessly edit and assemble the staged scenes, archival photographs, and newsreels, the film was a standout. I am proud to present the 2024 Women's Voices Now Film Festival's Best Creative Short Documentary, Abortions and Women's Rights, 1970, by Kata Maslow, Jane Pincus, Mary Summers, and Karen Weinstein. Please join us to say a few words after the trailer is over. I wanted to make a film because I had an abortion. It was a bad relationship with this guy. It was very hard for me to feel that I had any control. What we tried to deal with in the first part of the film was talking about our personal experience. Because I had given up one baby and then I got pregnant again, I, I couldn't stand it.
Abortion for a poor woman in Washington to go to the better hospitals will cost $500. I don't think children should always be brought into the world, no matter what. 